Hi guys, welcome to um, my show, um, Conscious Sisters on Block Talk Radio, and I'm also doing it on YouTube. <laughs> so um, today's topic um, is called Being Uncomfortable. And for anyone who doesn't know me, my name is Amy Shine, and I'm an Access Conscious Certified Facilitator. And um, I use tools from Access Consciousness to create more ease and in my life and to help others create more ease in their life. So, um, so what we're talking about today, being uncomfortable. Okay. So if you're looking to create change in your life, if there's something you're looking to make expand or have more of, like if you're looking to have more um, clients in your business or more people show up at your classes or maybe you want to move country or maybe you want to move new job or uh, maybe you want to create a new relationship. So a lot of times when we're asking for more, um, what, what we don't seem to realize sometimes is that when we go to like take those steps, it can sometimes be very uncomfortable. So that's why a lot of times we like, we like to like, we like try to play it small and keep everything the same because at least we know it and it's like our comfort zone so when you make a different choice like you decide you, like for me like I moved country two three three years ago three and a half years ago I moved from Ireland to America so that was like a big choice right to and it totally changed my whole life um, and it was like incredibly uncomfortable and um, and, it, and what came up when I moved country was like everything that was in my way and all my limitations came up in my face to stop me. So what I've noticed over time is that whenever I make a choice to go bigger or expand or choose something greater, everything that's keeping me so small and all my limitations come up in my face. So when I moved country that time, all my limitations came up like, why are you doing this? Like, you're crazy for doing this. You left an amazing life in Ireland. You were happy where you were. Even though I, I was happy, but I also knew more was possible. And I questioned my choice so much, even though I knew, I knew there was a greater possibility for me in America. I knew I could create more here. I knew there was choices available to me here that I didn't have in Ireland. And even though I knew that, I was so uncomfortable. Everything came up. For a, couple, for a good six months, I think, for the first six months that I was here, all my limitations were in my face, like questioning, like, are you sure you did the right choice? And, um, you know, like, are you really going to be able to create a life here? Like, and, and, you know, I got challenged a lot, like with, you know, where to live and people to live with and, and finding and creating a business here at the start wasn't, you know, I had to start everything from scratch. So what I found over time that, um, a lot of the time is that the limitations that comes up in your face, they're all lies. Um, a lot of it's doubt, like where you start to doubt yourself, like, oh, did I really make the right decision? And um, am I really crazy for doing this? And, you know, if you're like looking to expand your business or do more classes, the doubt comes up like, can I really do this? And, oh, what if, what if people don't like what I'm talking about? Or what if people don't like what I'm teaching? And, and all this doubt is really just designed to stop you. So one of the tools that I use to help me when I'm in those moments and those limitations are in my face is that I actually use a thing called the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement, which actually helps me to go beyond the doubt. So I would just look at like, okay, so all the doubt that is coming up right now, I choose to destroy and uncreate it. And I run the Access Consciousness Clearing Statement, which is right and wrong, good and bad, Pot and Pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can go to www.theclearingstatement.com. But basically what that does is it starts to clear away everywhere I'm stuck in a lie. And um, whenever you're in a lie, you're stuck. You, like, you have to clear it or choose something else to go beyond it. And, and I was talking, so that's what I'll do. I'll just go, okay. All the doubt I now choose to destroy and uncreate it. Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, corner, shorts, boys, beyonds. And then I keep going. I keep choosing because I know if I keep going beyond the doubt, beyond, the, beyond all the limitations that are in my face, there is something else there. There is actually like 
for all the things I've gone to chosen in my life, if I just keep going beyond the doubt, I'll realize, oh my God, I can do this. Oh my God, I can actually teach this class. Oh my God, people are actually going to come to me. Oh my God, I can actually create a life here. And um, so it's really good, like just not to quit, not to give up on yourself. Um, and I was talking to my yoga teacher the other day and um, basically I just took my 200 hour yoga teacher training and um, I took it at a really good, good school where I also take a lot of classes and a lot of people that go to the studio are very much big yoga people and they practice regular practice and you know they like the power yoga and um they are used to taking classes with a lot of well you know educated well-trained advanced yoga teachers and and i am just starting my journey with teaching yoga and um and i also do a lot of dance and movement and other stuff and I've just noticed, like, I was talking to my teacher, Peter, and I was saying, like, I'm noticing that I'm, like, choosing to create really small classes. And not that there's anything wrong with that, right? And I can see where I'm keeping myself in the comfort zone of, like, keeping it small so that I don't fuck up. And if I do fuck up, it's okay because there's not that many people there, <laughs> You know, and it's almost like he talked to me about coming to the studio and maybe maybe actually putting my decks up down in a subbing this so I would sub for a few classes. And I just looked at him and I was like, I am not ready for that. And he just started laughing. He's like, you are. And I was like, oh my God, I have been unwilling to actually step into an uncomfortable zone here for me because I had the point of view when I, and I'm still looking at it is I'm not ready for that. I'm not trained enough. I need more practice first. And what I know from life and just from living and from making choices and from choosing greater is that for everything I've chosen, I've never been ready for it. Like when I first found Access Bars, I chose to teach classes right away. I wasn't ready. I just chose it. And through me facilitating over time and through the practice of teaching and facilitating and putting on classes and having people showed up, I grew in confidence. I grew in knowing that I can do this. Did I have limitations come up that tell me, I can't believe you're doing this. Who's really going to come to your class? People aren't really going to pay for this. Like, you know, you're, you're like, you are not well qualified for this and all these like limitations coming up. But I knew, I knew I had to do this and I chose it in a way. And over time through the practice of it, like I'm five years an access facilitator now, bars facilitator, I know I can do this now, you know? So then it's like, okay, so what's next for me? What else can I choose? And then I became like a certified facilitator, which allowed me to teach more access classes. So now I can teach like a four day foundation class. And again, similar points of use come up. Can you really do this? Like, is anyone even really going to come to your class? And all these points of views. And then it's like, I can see, like I've done a couple of classes already and it's like, okay, this is the same thing. I just got to keep choosing keep doing it, keep putting myself out there. And the more I do that, the more I see, wow, you can really do this. People are showing up. People do desire to be at your class. And the more people are like, oh, Amy, I want to come to your class. I'm like, kind of like, what? Like, you want to come to my class? <laughs> you know, like we really underestimate ourselves. And like, we all have this energy and we all have a gift and a capacity and something to give and gift the world. And it's like you playing small doesn't serve anyone. Me keeping my classes small doesn't serve anyone. Me not choosing greater doesn't help anyone. And it's like the more that you can actually see you are required in the world. There's certain people out there who want to come to my classes. Not so much because of what I'm doing, because of what I'm being. There is an energy I have to give to them that they're looking for. And same for you if you're listening. There's something that you have to offer and you playing it small doesn't help anyone because you're required in the world. There's something that you have to give that nobody else can gift. So tool number two is to actually just start. Whatever it is you're holding your back, yourself back from, just start. And you'll be so surprised when people show up. And if they don't show up, it's okay. You just keep going because you choose this for you. And that's one thing I made the commitment with with creating dance classes and movement and yoga was that I was going to show up for me. And if other people showed up, great. And if they didn't, it's okay because I'm doing it for me. And I did that energy with, that's the energy I came in when I created my access classes. Like I'm doing this for me. 
I want, I require this for me and I'm going to teach this for me and facilitate me in the process and who wants to come and play. So, um, so what is it that you're, what is it? Sorry, I had some little quick notes. Yeah, so what is it that you have to gift? And what's that special thing that you have to give the world? And where are you keeping it hidden or keeping it small for fear that you'll fuck up or that you, you'll make a mistake? And the thing is, is if you make a mistake, it's okay. We all make mistakes. You just keep going. And like nobody, like none of the big great people in the world got to where they were without messing up, without making mistakes, without fucking up. And, um, and that's one, another tool that I'd like to give you is like allow yourself the permission to fuck up. Allow yourself to permission to not know. Like for me to step up and start teaching yoga at a well-known studio would be like, okay, it's okay. I don't have to know everything before I start. Same with teaching access classes or doing massage or whatever it is I do or whatever it is you do. You don't have to know everything before you start because you will learn when you start. You will learn what you don't know as you go and you will find out what you don't know and what you require or what you're missing as you go. Um, and then the, the fourth tool, I think I've given you three, I'd like to give you as well is that when all the limitations come up in your face and when all this energy comes up to like, you can't do this and are you crazy for doing this and all these lies that come up in your head that try to stop you, a really great tool is to go get your bars run. If you haven't heard of it, it's called access bars. It's a, a treatment where you lie down on a massage table and somebody touches all these points in your head and what it is, is a deletion system for all the lies that keep you stuck. And this has been amazing for me. When I go to step up in the world and when I moved to America and I had so many moments where I was like, what am I doing here? I would go and get my bars run and I trade with a friend that I had made here. And once I got my bars run, I would have space again and I would realize, okay, I can do this. It would just clear all the lies and all the judgments and all the limitations in my world so I had space. And I would do that on a regular basis. And then the fourth or fifth two was that I also had a friend that supported me, who had my back, who didn't judge me, and who was like my cheerleader. And um, Sue Cotter is her name, and she still is a very close friend of mine. And when I am stepping up or, or choosing something greater, and I have all these limitations that come up to stop me, I call her, and she reassures me. She is the person who has my back, who supports me 100% in everything I'm doing and lets me know, like, it's okay, me, keep going, like, you're good. Like, just having that someone like that in your life can really, really help you and support you in those moments where you feel like you want to quit or you're not doing enough or you're not qualified enough. Have that one person that you can call. And if you've more than one, that's great, but where you can call and be like, I really feel like quitting right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Am I crazy? Am I stupid? And just to have that someone ask you a few questions and actually get you to see that you actually are a gift, you are a contribution, you have something to give to the world and just to keep going and not quit and not give up on you. And it's okay. It's okay to be uncomfortable. A lot of times that uncomfortableness is actually excitement because you're aware of what you're stepping into and what you're about to step into and what you're about to create and change. So when you're in the uncomfortable, go move further, take more and more steps and move faster and let yourself just fly. So thanks for listening to my show, guys. I'll be back next week with another new topic. You can catch me on Facebook as Amy Shine, A-M-Y-S-H-I-N-E. Mail me any questions. You can also check out Conscious Sisters on our Facebook page. Talk to you soon. Bye.